So, a few months ago, I finished Squad 666, and once that was uploaded, I was planning on moving on with CT 1313, my next big brick film project. But then I saw this in my YouTube subscription feed, and I decided that I really wanted to enter, and a month and a half of hard work later, and I finally finished it. Last week, I released Hunted, if you haven't seen it already, obviously go and check it out, but in this video, we're going to be going into all the things that went into making this video. I hope you do enjoy. By the way, at the end of this video, there's a T for my next brick film so make sure you watch the end to see that. So I'm going to go through this fairly chronologically and obviously we're starting with the script. Now I went through about five versions of the script. The first version was basically a group of stormtroopers hunting down a Jedi and the end version was a group of bounty hunters hunting down a Jedi and her rebel companions. So it didn't change a lot even after all of those versions, while I was filming, I made a few small changes as well. When writing the script, I just wanted to make sure it was always interesting, have some really high points and some more low, not so action intense points, but had some tension building up. I feel like it ended up being pretty good. Something I paid a lot of attention to with this film was the set design. And the first and most important thing about this set was that it split into 14 different parts. Basically, this allowed me to take half of the set away get different angles and things so I could get the camera nice and close to the action without having to zoom in and suffer from the bad video quality. When designing the set, I tried to keep in mind what the camera would be seeing at all times. This just helped for when I was filming to be able to make sure that I could block off certain parts with certain trees and things in front of the camera and all the things along those lines and that really did help in the end. One thing I would have changed though would be I wish I didn't put quite as much detail on the floor because when characters are walking along a surface and there is a single plate just sticking up it is really annoying to have them walking over it it just takes a lot more work so next time I don't think I'll go too much detail into the floor and more on the surrounding areas. The next logical thing to talk about would be the animation. I captured all of the animation on my 2019 iPod Touch which I've used for my other films in the I then past. used the Stop Motion Studio Pro app on there and that works pretty well in my experience so I was quite comfortable with doing that. I used all of the standard techniques, there wasn't anything too flashy, it was just standard easing in and out and all of that. Something cool that I did do though was when I was filming any shots with blaster bolts, I'd just have a flashlight with me and whenever someone fired their blaster, I basically just moved the flashlight across the screen frame by frame to make it look like the blaster bolt was actually emitting light which I think ended up making all of the blaster bolts feel like they were actually in the film. The animation obviously took the main amount of time, it took about two and a half weeks I think. I worked it out from the time lapse footage that I have about 120 hours of a time lapse, however there was a lot which I did off camera, so it's probably more like 150 to 160 hours just on the animation alone. Then the final thing to talk about is of course the editing. The editing took about two weeks, a little less than the animation, but it was still a very large portion of the work. The main editing was done in Filmora 10, which I've used for about a year now and I think it works very well for what I do. However, certain things like the lightsaber effect could not be done in Filmora, so I turned to one of the sponsors of the contest. Hit film. Now I started editing all of the lightsaber effects and everything, I was really happy with how it was turning out. But then I realised there was a watermark if you don't pay for the full version, I didn't really want to do that. So I ended up getting my friend to do it for me, I sent him some of the files and stuff, that all worked out well, it was a bit annoying but oh well. After that I decided to do all of the blaster effects in Filmora. The blaster effects are a combination of green screen elements that I got from the internet and other things that I did myself, all combined to make the blaster effects. I'm pretty happy with that. I tried to make each blaster have a slightly different looking bolt, which I think did add a bit more detail, which I'm pretty happy with. After all the effects were done, the final thing to do was the compositing, which is basically just getting rid of the blue screen and adding in a better background. So I went into studio and created a whole 3D environment, trying to match all of the dimensions and everything to make it as accurate as possible and I think that turned out quite well you can see I've got this whole forest here and then I just rendered each of those images separately imported them into Filmora, got rid of the blue screens and then added in the pictures. There was a lot more work that went into doing that than I actually just said but I don't really want to go into it. 
the very final part of making this film was the sound design. The music, luckily I've done music before and I was able to just use those things that I'd done before. So that worked out very nicely. I did do a bit of ominous music though in band lab, which was quite fun. Then I also had to do the voices and I really wanted someone cool to do the Mandalorian. So I went on the Brick Film Day server, which is basically a Discord server with a lot of talented Brick filmers. I basically just asked, can anyone do a voice for me? And Shane RT just said, sure. And then a few weeks later, I got the voices and here we are. So that is it for the Hunted Behind the Scenes. This is obviously made for the Cinematic Captures 5 Years Contest, which ended just a couple hours ago when I'm recording this voiceover. I don't expect to actually win anything, I just thought that I may as well make a film for it, because it was quite a fun thing. So, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and here is the clip for my upcoming brick film, which I promised you at the start of this video. Take a little walk to the edge of town the track where the viaduct looms like a bird of doom as it ships